John Fetterman. I just we were talking about this off the air. I I don't know if you gave me a what magic wand buck. This is this is a good kind of uh idea. If you gave me a magic wand, then I could say this person can no longer be in office. There are several people that I would consider Gretchen Whitmer in the state of Michigan because I think she failed so much on COVID. Gavin Newsom, because I think he was wrong with everything in COVID. But if you said you can wave a magic wand and the person in Congress who you could replace, I think I would go with John Fetterman because there are people I disagree with on all sorts of issues in Congress, and certainly AOC would be tempting as well. Fetterman legitimately can't speak. He's degrading the United States Senate by his mere presence because he is wearing hoodies and shorts on the Senate floor, and they have changed the rules of the Senate to comport with his man-child-like behavior. And even for blue-collar people, it's weird to wear shorts, athletic shorts, all the time. He's from Pennsylvania. You, You live in Miami. At least if you were in Miami and you wore shorts all the time, like it tends to be pretty warm. Like, guys who wear shorts all year round are weird. There's I've been going to football games for a long time, Buck. There's always dudes. It'll be like 20 degrees. There'll be some guy in shorts. You'll be like, why are you wearing shorts? It's like, it's not that cold out. It's, it's, it's minus 10, all right? You're in shorts. Like, you're, you, you look like an imbecile. And he can't do the job. This was Fetterman. This is the audio. I believe Fetterman is right now presiding over the Senate, I always have to say I believe because it's a photo in this day and age, every photo it feels like can be can be faked, but it appears Fetterman is presiding over the Senate. This is 100% real. Fetterman analyzing the auto worker strike. Here it is. My message to the, the, CEOs, the CEOs is, you know, at $74 million, you know, collectively earning that, you know, how many yachts can they need, you know, you know to, to yacht... It's, the water uh, ski behind it. You know, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so, Clay, I mean, I have a slightly uh, amended uh, view of, of the Fetterman situation. Uh, I'm not sure that I would say he can't. You're saying he can't do the job. I think that's he physically true. is not capable right. of doing the job. But okay. that's true under the expectation that a United States senator is supposed to be a person of some knowledge, character, and cognitive ability. I'm not sure that's true anymore. I mean, I, I think the job, it's a little bit like with journalists. You can sit around and talk about, oh, man, the New York Times journalists aren't doing their jobs. Well, their job isn't to speak the truth and to just go where the facts lead them. Their job is to prop up a left-wing authoritarian narrative under the guise of, you know, or under the aegis of the Democrat Party. Like, that's the actual job. And I think the actual job uh, for Fetterman as a Democrat in Pennsylvania is to create this, this brand of you know the everyday working man you know it's a, yeah joe biden who it was never an everyday working man for a day in his life i mean you know joe biden wasn't uh wasn't carrying around cinder blocks and wearing a hard hat i can assure you like that was not joe biden's existence but he was mr oh i'm just you know working class joe from scranton and the whole thing fetterman is creating a political legend in pennsylvania that will be uh useful to him and and they've played the sympathy card with him very well too Again, you hold them to the standard of, and you've talked about the coach thing a few times, right? You should be able to actually be good at this. The standard for Fetterman isn't being good at this. It's he's a reliable Democrat vote, and he's created a persona that will let him win in Pennsylvania. You know what I mean? It's, It's almost like he's playing a character, and the character isn't expected to be smart, capable, or, you know, able to speak. It makes me so angry that. This happened in Pennsylvania because, look, if John Fetterman Buck had come out of, I I don't know, Vermont, sorry, Vermont, I would be like, okay, you know, that's a super left wing state. They are going to elect. I mean, they've got Bernie Sanders, who's a socialist. The fact that Fetterman is able to be elected in one of the five or six biggest and most integral states in the United States right now 
should terrify every single person listening to us. Because what it means, and I hate that we could ever be here, is that truly a candidate doesn't matter at all. Even scarier, Buck, he's better than a generic candidate. Yes. Well, this is what he, I mean. The people are beat, voting for he beat a, Biden. They're voting for a brand with Fetterman. They're not they, they don't cast their ballot because they think that John Fetterman is with the nerds behind closed doors thinking about things like tax policy. Like that's not it. It's that he's a Democrat Marxist who does the everyman shorts and, and sweatshirt routine all, all the time. I mean, he's clearly doing this on purpose. Or like, we'd all sort of like to walk around and dress like we just don't care about anything. Or I shouldn't say like to, but, you know, there's an impulse to do that. Like, I, I could show up to any number of jobs wearing pajamas. And I, and I know Susan Collins has come out and said, well, can I wear a yeah. bikini on the Senate floor? Maybe I'll wear a bikini. She's backed off of that, but that would be quite a sight. Um, <laughs> and by Senate rules, I do not think it would be, I don't think you could oppose it. I think there is no dress code now. So, uh, you know, Fetterman as, as a brand, though, we can sit here and talk about how he can, and we will, talk about how he can't speak and the whole thing is preposterous all day. He beat a Republican Senate candidate in a key swing state by a lot. Yeah. And they, I mean, yeah, the debate was late in the process and there was early voting going on. People knew they didn't care. They didn't care. And I just want to come back again to your point. No normal people dress like John Fetterman. I mean, I, if you live in Pennsylvania, it's friggin' cold. It's really, really cold for five months of the year, right? Early in the morning when you walk out to your car at, uh, you know, 6 a.m. to go do a blue-collar job in Pennsylvania in November, December, January, February, and March, it's cold. People who work construction and work uh, in, you know, get their hands dirty jobs don't actually wear oversized athletic shorts and hoodies to their jobs. Like, he, it's not only, Buck, I guess, that, I'm, that, that I find him so infuriating. It's not only that he's doing cosplay. It's that he's doing, because he doesn't have a job like that, right? It's that he's doing cosplay and not even dressing up like somebody who was truly blue collar would dress. Does that make sense? Like, you, you, if you went to a St Steelers game or you went to an Eagles game and you are a blue-collar guy and you sit in the upper deck of the stadium because that's the tickets you can afford. I know those guys. I talk to those guys. A lot of those guys are Penn State fans. They don't dress like John Fetterman. Like, it's weird to me. I don't know, and, and, and it's, it's strange that he has that appeal. I really would like to drill down on who his voters are because I tend to think that he probably is getting leftists who think that's what blue-collar guys actually are like. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very strange to me to even think about what his appeal is because I, I don't imagine that there's lots of guys who see him and think, oh, he reflects me. I think it's people who are on the left and are more motivated because they think that's what blue collar guys look like. Does that make sense in some way? Like where his appeal actually is? Um, yeah, I, I think I think it does. I'm not sure that that's. I would love to look at the data and analytics of his votes because I think he's actually insulting the people who he claims that he's somehow representing in the way that he dresses. Because I think blue collar people look. If you go to a funeral, you don't show up in a hoodie and shorts like you dress if you go to church you dress with respect even if you does that make sense yeah like, no I, I hear what even, you're saying like yeah it just people it's actually super disrespectful what pe he's people doing. making you know 30 grand a year show up in a suit as well when a suit is required right it's not you know that that, that this notion that uh he's a senator now he's probably making two something i mean whatever the yeah, Senate right. salary is um, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. There's a little I mean, bit of a... My grandfathers worked their whole lives in factories. Uh, yeah. They never showed up at church in blue jean shorts. Like, they, it just, you just wouldn't have done it. You showed respect for the place that you walked into, even if you didn't necessarily have the financial resources to be able to be buying tuxedos and rolling around in four-piece suits. Yeah. Look, there's... If you look at the... If you look at a... 
whole range of whether it's left wing activists, community organizers, Marxist, communist dictators, there's a theatricality that can come along with it. You know, Castro wore that general's, uh, you, you know, uniform for a True. long yes. time. Right? I mean, so, you know, there's people that Zelensky, the, Zelensky still rolling around in his T-shirts. I'm I'm upset because I actually have a couple That's of like green look. T-shirts and Clay. Yeah. If I wear a green T-shirt now, he's like, "Hello, Zelensky. Do you want some money?" Like I can't get away with it anymore.